Hi, join us for episode number nine of In Today's Timeline. We have some pretty cool number ones for you this week, some uh, good villains, so let's get to it. Um, I'll be starting us off with Death of Doctor Strange number three. Um, we get to know about how um, Doctor Strange got killed here. Um, four warlords from magical um, uh, regions have uh, kind of got summoned in there to kill him. Um, that's how he was finally able to, you know, die. Um, then Clea's there, the sorceress of the purple dimension, his estranged ex-wife. So she's trying to figure stuff out with the current Doctor Strange, you know, the older Doctor Strange. Um, we have a pretty cool um, scene where Doctor Strange is operating on Doctor Strange because it's the, the older one and the newer one there. And he's just kind of like, oh, it's okay. pretty funny. Um, so yeah, we know that his soul was stolen. Um, the Eye of Agamotto has been stolen and his... Uh, cloak has been stolen as well so his soul can't pass on to the new um, Sorcerer Supreme therefore the whole earth and all of the heroes are screwed um, and we also know that now this creature that's killing everything it's like it's really weird really creepy we finally get to see it it's like a like a baby with just like a huge head like a Mordok head but he's like yeah you did show me that art and it was different <laughs> from marvel definitely um so he's a hyper creature from a different dimension he's like an apex predator of magical beings um so his appetite can never be sated so he's just going through every single reality and just eating everything and everyone i almost got a chithulu vibe when you showed me the picture yeah that's what i got there, there, and every other like scene that they've been kind of showing bits and pieces it seemed like it was like a big mammoth type of creature because it's got these two tusks but then we see that it's like a brain with like i don't know if the tentacles move or not but yeah, at the end of it, the new Doctor Strange um, tracks down the eye and the cloak to uh, Beryl Carl Mordos, which is one of his uh, supervillains, and, and that's how they, uh, the issue ends. So, oh, very nice. I enjoyed it, and I liked the stories uh, moving along. But you're number one. All right. Uh, so Franco mentioned the number ones that we have this week, and we actually have a series finale with Batman Reptilian 6, uh, Garth Ennis, Ends his run on Batman uh, with Liam Sharp on art, um, and the art has been the highlight of this of this series to date. Um, it's been a lot of fun reading this one. It's painted, so quite a quite a change from most regular comic books. Um, and in this one, we see we see the full extent of the reptilian. We saw it a little bit in five when it was flying around, um, but we know it was big enough to eat a Batmobile whole. Um, because they blow it up. They self-destruct a Batmobile in its stomach, and it still doesn't die. Wow. It is just damaged to the point where they can contain it now. Um, and you get to see some more of Garth Ennis' humor um, at the end. Batman's just like, you wouldn't be doing anything to put this into the, the war, industrial war complex now, would you? And it's just like, we're the U.S. government. We would never do something like that. <laughs> and he also hands over Killer Croc to the government uh, for testing to figure out if he's going to evolve anymore or cause more problems down the line. Um, but yeah, a nice little wrap up. It was only like 16 pages. Uh, these issues have been going from 16 to like 30 back to 16. Um, so this one was pretty quick. It's a pretty quick read. I would highly recommend the series overall. Um, just to look at Liam Sharp's great paint, uh, paint art. Um, and at the end of issue six, you do get a, a letter that uh, was written by either Garth Ennis back in the day uh, when they were first pitched this series. It was going to be main continuity, um, and they're kind of talking to the editor about how they can get away with maiming or possibly killing a few of Batman's rogues. Um, obviously now this is black label, so they can do whatever they want, and none of it matters. But uh, overall, highly recommend the series as a whole. I would give it I would give it a 9 out of 10. Definitely a fun one. Um you get to see all of Batman's rogues. So, yeah, back to you, Franco. Yeah, the art style on that one was really cool. I didn't read the whole thing, but it, it looked awesome. Um, we're starting with our number ones for this week. Venom 1. Whatever happened after the King in Black events is here. So this is a kind of a strange... We both read this one. This is kind of a strange series. It's going to be co-written by Al Ewing, who just finished up Immortal Hulk. And Ram V, who just finished up Catwoman, or is finishing Catwoman, also writes Swamp Thing for DC, 
And then Brian Hitch will be on art, who's who's been around a quite some time now, and his art's always really good. Um, he did the alternate covers for Infinite Frontier. Um, but I'll let you start with this one. Yeah, so events after King and Black, we know that Eddie Brock is out in the world just, you know, being the, the King and Black. He's pretty much playing intergalactic police. King Eddie the First, he calls himself. And then um, on the other end, we have Dylan still at home um, on, on Earth, kind of dealing with everything, um, knowing that he's got powers. And um, so. and half the Venom symbiote. Yeah. Yeah, That's he, there. He's also got the sleeper one. I like he's him. got sleeper, the cat. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, there's a big intergalactic uh, threat that's coming very soon. Venom, uh, well, not Venom, Ed, King, King Eddie goes into um, the future. So unlike the previous run, uh, which was Donnie Coates, this one is going to explore more of a of a timeline thing as we see Eddie go into the past. Uh, they're also looking at Eddie's body cause he's dead in the present now. Mm -hmm. Um, and he also goes into the future and sees a bunch of threats that are coming. Uh, we do see Kang, um, and he calls Eddie his oldest friend, or maybe he's talking to Venom. We don't know. Um, so that'll be an intriguing pathway. This series takes us on. Um, but next issue will be more Dylan centric. So that's how this book's going to be written is one half. Every other issue is about the other symbiote. So this one was probably more Eddie based, I would say. Really got everything going. And then from here, it'll be like Rebirth Wonder Woman, where there was one story going on, and then two weeks later, there's another story. Um, but they're still slightly interconnected. But now Eddie's in the past, so. He will not be interacting with Dylan. So they're bringing him that way. Though it's kind of cool that they killed him at the end and just you know vaporized yes, him. Yes, we see uh, we see another new cosmic entity at the end. Yeah. I would say she's quite powerful. I mean, she does birth Eddie back, and she says you're regaining your physical form, so it'll take you a second. And yeah, that's like at the end of time mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, yeah, this person's called Meridius, um, and yeah, it's just like a big cosmic entity yeah. kind of like galactic got like dormammu vibes from her very powerful so yeah we don't know much um from issue two is already out um so we will learn more soon maybe next week maybe the week after we'll be talking about that one nice. um and on to our final book of the week uh we have hulk one this is by donnie Coates. um he has moved from Venom onto Hulk, uh, Immortal Hulk ended, and now we have this Hulk who begs the question, is Hulk there to protect us from Banner, as the, the main cover states? Um, and Banner's gone insane. Yeah, he pretty much has. He's uh, found a way to control the Hulk, you know, like, angry control him, like, just put him in a cage, piss him off every time he needs his power, mm -hmm. and he's riding what we're calling Starship Hulk. Yes, they are calling it Starship Hulk. And he's gone somewhere. Um, we don't know where he is going. Um, you get this great fight with the Hulkbuster suit. He just destroys four Hulkbuster suits, actually. Um, one of them being manned by Tony himself. And Hulk makes very quick work of them. Um, they try this new weapon that we've never really seen before. These animantium nanites. Yeah, very cool. Um, and he doesn't even care. He just rips his own arm right off to get out of that one. Yeah, the adamantium nanites are supposed to be controlled by Tony. So he th throws him into the air, shrapnel everywhere on Hulk. And then he's trying to hold his arm down. And Hulk's just like, who cares? Just rip it. Arm clean right off and uh, continues to fight and just still continues to beat the crap out of the Hulkbuster suit. Yeah, so we're going to see how insane has Banner gone. Uh, can Hulk regain any any bit of himself? Because obviously Banner is just, it's just Banner in control of the Hulk's body at this point yep. until the 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 mental side of Hulk can figure out how to regain some control. Uh, normally it would be you know, the last during Immortal Hulk, Hulk came out at night. Banner had control during the day. That was how that book was written. But in this one, it is all Banner. Yeah, just... uh, he has plans, and he's finally tired of people, you know, using him where they need him. And um, 
yeah, he just uh, wants to do something different. Just clearly he's lost it. He's also gone crazy to the point of hallucinating. Yeah. Uh, he does see Betty Ross. Well, he's inside his head in that situation. So he, yeah, he's, yeah, crazy. he's really crazy. He's just like, leave me alone. I've had enough of this conversation. And uh, so, yeah, as they say it there, he's fractured his mind into like three parts. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's how he's keeping everything controlled. And how he's uh, pulling the strings from inside his own head, which mm-hmm. is just nuts. Um, but very cool how he's got that cybernetics. Suit. Yeah, the cybernetic enhancements look yeah. very cool. Uh, gives Hulk even more power, even though he really doesn't need any more power. Um, and then we also see right at the end one last thing: we see Iron Man still has the celestial c- celestial suit celestial, yeah. uh, from the King and Black event. He was using it for test, probably as weapon building, as we all know that Tony is. Um, but it's that huge. is still around. Yeah, it's like it's huge. I mean, it's one of the Celestials right there. And that was pretty cool as the Hulk knows. Well, Banner knows. So he's going in there and he's like, Tony, like, get the hell out of my way. I'm yeah. going to get there one way or another. Like, whether it's you, whether it's a suit, don't care. Just move. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he goes through the portal. Yes, yeah, so and that's kind of how it ended. Um, no, no villain teases in this one like Venom had. So we'll see if Banner's his own villain. Um, and it's just people trying to hunt him down. Or if we start seeing some some powerful entities trying to stop him. Yeah, no, I'm definitely looking forward to more of this one. Yes, yes. Venom started a little slow, but the Hulk one is just like... Wait, it's... Yeah, I think Hulk is the pick of the week. Yeah, I would definitely say so. Mm-hmm. Not 10 out of 10, great issue one. I thought Venom was a little all over the place, a little much for an issue one. Maybe it should have been a little longer, but... Uh... Yeah, Hulk, pick of the week. Yeah, definitely a um, ten out of ten. We might as well get that done. Uh, okay. uh, I mean, yeah, I would say I would say overall, Hulk's a ten out of ten. I'll give Venom a seven. It had some highs, it had some lows. Yeah, seven's a decent one for. Um... Oh, one final note on Venom. There's also a second Eddie Brock. He's he's in the house looking for Dylan, yes. and he's just like, that's not me. Don't go with him. Yeah, like I was a bit confusing. I'm just wondering if that was like the Venom symbiote changing, or I, I don't know. We, oh. Yeah, we don't know. We I think the cat's infected. You see him with red eyes. Yeah, but I thought At he's always had the red eyes. I thought it was like green. Maybe not. Maybe not. Go check that out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely check that out. Uh, Batman Reptilian, which I said my overall score would be like a 9 out of 10. It's a good run. Yeah, a good run. Um, it'll be collected eventually. So check that out. I mean, Doctor Strange has been doing really well so far. I mean, 7 out of 10 because I mean, we're just moving along the story. Nothing like crazy. Actually, I might move it to 8 out of 10 just because I got to see the crazy creature that's mm-hmm. killing everything. It's how creepy it is, but... Yeah, there goes their uh, ratings for the ones for this week. But we'll uh, move on to uh, Hawkeye Episode 2. Hawkeye Episode 2. Um, and where do we start with this one? Uh, Hawkeye and Kate Bishop are now to, are in, you know, in the universe together, interacting. Um, they go to her apartment. Hawkeye's trying to deal with this whole ronin situation um trying not to let on that he's ronin that's kind of a big plot of this series as we saw in the third episode which francis has not watched yet so we won't talk about that (laughs) but um let's see here the apartment scene that fight was pretty cool yep they are throwing maltoffs and he catches them and throws them back that's pretty cool and then the um yeah the, everything started to catch fire ronin suits about to get burnt kate bishop shoots an arrow at the fire extinguisher and that does not go as planned yeah, and actually work. flies out but <laughs> but cool you know it's yes. the whole like so hawkeye she, also he, you know he shoots random things and sometimes it goes his way she does not have the 20 years of hawkeyeing that clint barton does um, um and then was, we get another villain tease with swordsman um, is who his... is Kate Bishop's? It would be her. It would end up being her stepfather. Mm-hmm. Um, he's kind of hiding how good of a swordsman that he is um, until she actually tries to stab him, and he just takes the sword right out of her hand, basically without even looking. It's like it's great. But um, one thing I have to add here: right before the sword fight, there was the dinner scene, and I see a lot of people giving like the show a lot of crap, but it's not a movie. It's a show. So it's okay. It's got to have these moments when it's just downtime. You can't just run through it. I think they've been doing really well in the pacing so far. I mean, it's a series. We can't get movie quality stuff in every yeah, single episode. Yeah, this, this episode definitely dragged a little bit. I, I will agree with the overall internet on that one. This one dragged slightly compared to... 
one and three, which again, not talking about three yet. That's next week. But yeah, it wasn't too bad. It had its it had its ups and downs. They got to do some setting up of villains. Um, and even then, we don't know who's a bad guy. The mother could be a bad guy. <laughs> oh, so, so I was saying, if they need something to trigger Kate into, you know, getting some anger or whatever, just kill the mom off in the show. It should create a lot of stuff. So, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. It was a decent episode. I would say overall, I'll give this one a seven. Yeah. It's good. I like the um, LARPing part, too. That was, part, that was in this one, right? What? live action role play oh yes yes that is this one yes that one that scene was pretty fun i enjoyed that i mean we had a friend billy he used to do oh that. yeah 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 billy yes he used to do the vikings yeah. yes viking larping so yes. uh, yeah it was kind of cool to see that and um that's another introduction to another guy um that guy that gives him the suit back it's supposed to be somebody in the comics okay um yeah, I'll he does say his name, and I don't remember. What Greer, yeah. So Greer is in the comics, so okay. um, he he will. All right, that's good to know. Good to know. He will be back. They made it sound like he'd be back. Yeah. Like he's he's just like, oh, give me a call. Here's my name. Yeah, you know, if you need anything, let me know. This is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. It's like, oh, you can call me Clint. Well, what? I can call you Clint. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yes. Um, and finally, we have a little bit of news this week. Uh, we got the first Jack Reacher trailer from, it's just called Reacher, uh, from Amazon. Um, and it's Alan Richson uh, from Hawk. He played Hawk on Talking the Titans. Titans. Yeah. Right. Um, and <laughs> it looks pretty good. Yeah, he looks awesome there. He's a super ripped. I mean, he was <laughs> even more ripped. I mean, yes. he was ripped when he was doing Hawk, but now he's just like extra. He's very intimidating as Hawk, and now he looks even scarier. Um, there's some humor in the in the trailer. Um, Jack Reacher is supposed to be a bit of an asshole, so it does sound yes, like it. Yes. He definitely anything's better than Tom Cruise. I said it. <laughs> I don't like Tom Cruise. It's simple as that. But um, and then not much else to add. Check that trailer out. Uh, Amazon, uh, YouTube, anywhere. It's all over the place. And then I think our final news of the week is Sebastian Stan posted a picture of himself reading the first Reckless book. So um, just, uh, possibly teasing some kind of project. Since we've been talking about the reckless ones, maybe he's been listening. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that would be pretty cool. I think he'd do a pretty cool reckless. He would be very good as Ethan Reckless. Yeah. Um, now, how would they do it? Uh, the books don't have a lot of, not too much backbone to them. They're only about 120 pages each. So they could be movies. Uh, they could be a TV show, although I don't know how a TV show would, would feel. Um, or they could go the Fear Street way. Netflix had a horror show. It was three episodes, all connected, but they were longer than shows, but I think they were shorter than movies. I mean, I'd like to see them done as movies. You have a trilogy right in front of you. Um, that is true. Um, only if Ed Brubaker is involved. You can't be. You can't just not. He, his writing definitely makes the series. Um, and if they do it as a series, you could just create more... Um, issues and people that call in you can just have an immense sure. amount of people calling it in be like a burn notice style show um yeah. where every episode is a new call um although i don't know how accurate it would be to the books as the books seem to be a little bit more than 60 minutes of a tv show um but we'll see what comes of that as i said nothing confirmed there so all right, yeah, that wraps it up for uh, us this week. So uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, we'll be back next week. Right, yeah, and, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks.